Gold was used for making jewellery in Ireland from the beginning of the Bronze Age. These include some items similar to those worn today, like bracelets, neck rings, and other fashion accessories. The properties of gold, including its color, the fact that it does not corrode, and as it is easy to work and shape when compared to other metals, all help explain its long-lasting appeal. The following two objects from the later Bronze Age are intriguing examples of the goldsmith's art. This tiny gold object, found at Inch near Downpatrick, is known as a heart-shaped bulla and was made sometime between 800 and 950 BC. It is incredibly rare. At the time of its discovery, only six others from Ireland were known and is remarkable for the ability of its maker to work at a miniature scale without the modern aid of a magnifying glass. The bulla has two main parts, a heart or bag-shaped body and a tubular top. The thin sheet of gold from which it is made is decorated where the front and back join with 13 tiny strands of twisted wire and four along the top, almost impossible to count with the naked eye. The back is plain, but the front is decorated with nine concentric circles, each of which has a central stud or pin. The fact that it has a tube along the top suggests it was threaded, perhaps with a leather cord and worn as a secret locket or necklace. An X-ray has revealed it is a clay core rather than containing anything more mysterious. Incredibly, the Inch Bulla is similar to two other Bulla from the northwest corner of Loch Ney, from Kinigo in County Armagh and near Arbo in County Tyrone, now in the National Museum of Ireland. Although the Kinigo and the Inch Bulla are very similar in size, it is the Arbo Bulla that is most similar to the one from Inch. Every feature of their construction and their decoration is similar. They both have clay cores. They are decorated in exactly the same way with the gold filigree wire and a pattern of concentric circles across the surface. So it seems most likely that they were made by the same goldsmith or in the same goldsmith's workshop. Close to where the bulla was found at Downpatrick is spectacular evidence for Bronze Age gold work in the form of a large gold hoard consisting mostly of bracelets, which is on display in the case behind us. This gold torque, found at Corrard, near the Belle Isle Estate in Upper Loch Urn, is one of the most spectacular single items of Bronze Age gold jewellery ever discovered in Ireland. The word torque, from the Latin to twist, does not refer to the fact that the object has been compressed like a coil spring. The name relates to the twisting of a square gold bar, as metalsmith Brian Clark demonstrates. The ancient goldsmiths would have been using gold and the first thing they had to do was to cast a little square ingot of whatever size they were intending to make the finished piece. This ingot then would have been hammered and forged out and the ends um, made circular. Here we can see the beginning of the, the pinching in of the metal and the way it extends out and lengthens and the square section in the centre which will be split and the flange is created so it's forged in a square section and then split down on the four sides. It now becomes the stage where the actual item can become a torque and be twisted. What makes the card torque Highly unusual is its coiled spring-like shape. This is not how it would originally have looked, as we can see in examples from the National Museum of Ireland. As far as we know, torques were circular hoops with interlocking terminals that worked like clasps on a necklace or a belt buckle so that they could be opened and closed. Unfortunately, no torque has been found with a skeleton, so we have to presume based on their size that they were worn either around the neck 
or around the waist. Remarkably, the Karor torque, when uncoiled, measures about 121 centimetres or 47 inches, so that it would have fitted around the waist of a very substantial person. Perhaps the reason for the coiling was to make the process of burial easier, and by sacrificing precious metalwork, people believed they were pleasing their gods, warding off evil, or bringing good luck. It may even be part of a burial without a body, and in that respect, the coiling was like a form of decommissioning, rendering it unwearable and no longer part of this world. Weighing 720 grams, this is one of the heaviest torques ever discovered. And irrespective of who owned it or why it was coiled and buried, it reflects access to extreme wealth and the ability to secure a commodity whose value has stood the test of time.